wouldn't we all like to make a difference in the world in which we live? Perhaps leave a legacy? Would you like to try to help the environment that you live in? Maybe save a species or, or find a new species? These things are all possible. I'm going to show you how you can be. You can be a David Attenborough at home. You can become virtual citizen scientist. When I first started um, many years ago, or first growing up actually, I, I grew up in and under and on top of the water. I mean, I, I love the ocean, I'm a marine biologist, and um, I love the species that are within it. And I tried to get both of those passions in the one place, so that encouraged me to go and study science at Murdoch University. When I first got a chance to go up to Ningaloo, it was back in 1994, I, I actually uh, had long hair, it was dark, it wasn't grey. I got away with wearing budgie smugglers every now and again at the same time. And I went up there to help a mate who was working, doing some research. I fell in love with Ningaloo Reef and I also fell in love with one of its main attractions and that was the whale shark which you're seeing up there at the moment. It's almost been 20 years I've been involved with this species to try and help with their uh, ultimate conservation because I found out that very little was known about whale sharks at the time. These animals were only first discovered in 1828 um, even though they've been around since the Jurassic time. Indications were that they were a threatened species and you know, some work needed to be done about them. They come up to Ningaloo Reef every year around March and April for about three or four months and they aggregate there. And I'm West Australian, it gave me the, I thought, well, that's what I want to work on. I'm going to go and aggregate to Ningaloo every autumn and work on these guys. <laughs> but it was a pretty hard job because how do you study a whale shark? They're, they're quite a cryptic species. They're big and they're beautiful, but they're, they're a shark. They can dive down to the bottom of the ocean, very hard to study and um, we thought it was going to be pretty hard. There were some challenges. I was very fortunate. I got, uh, I got to know the people at Ningaloo. The 15 operators that take tourists out every day uh, became my new best friends. And whenever there was a spot to go out swimming with these guys, I jumped on the boat and started researching them. They've got a beautiful pattern of lines and spots on their skin, as you can see on this, this scenario here. They were actually um, unique to each, each individual. They were like a fingerprint. What I started to do was go out on the boats, take photos, try to understand whether the same whale sharks were being seen every day or if they were coming back uh, each year or how many, to determine how many whale sharks were actually out there. But I could only be out on one boat one day at a time and sometimes there might be five or ten whale sharks out on the reef. It's easy to, to identify one photo, one shark that I'm taking against maybe the 20 photos I took last month or the 50 I took Last, the month before, but I'm not getting all the sharks that are out there and I thought, right, let's get hold of citizen scientists, let's engage those hundreds, maybe thousands of people that are swimming with whale sharks every day. I, got, I engaged people to actually help us collect the data, take the photos, and uh, it, was, it was fantastic, but it was a bit difficult because it's all right when you've got one photo against 20, 30 or 50, but you've got 100 and potentially 1,000, it's almost impossible. Thankfully, I was fortunate enough to drag in two guys that are great friends of mine and both of them have got brains the size of planets. One of them is um, Jason Holmberg who's a software engineer and Zavan Arzamanian who's a, um, a NASA astrophysicist and an algorithm guru. We found a, a way of adapting um, something that NASA uh, created for mapping stars in the night sky to map the spots on the skin of the whale shark and compare it against the hundreds and maybe thousands of other photos in a computer program. It worked brilliantly and it, it enabled us to um, match up many, many whale sharks over many years and try to and get a much better understanding of their numbers up at Ningaloo. It was a project that uh, was got underway by um, collaboration between DC, the operators and, and Murdoch University and it enables us to start the photo ID library. It was great because anybody anywhere in the world could participate, great tools for searching and analysis and importantly if the tourist took a photo and that was matched up to another shark that was seen last year or 10 years ago, they'll get an automatic email telling them of this occasion. That was great for getting people involved. Now some of these sharks have been seen up there 20, 50, you know, 60 times and one of the main ones was um, still my favourite is, is Stumpy. He's got a dodgy tail as you can see there. That was the first whale shark I swam with in 1995 and it's been seen pretty much every year since, we, uh, since I began. He's even got his own Facebook page and, and his own um, Twitter account and, we, and he's actually really great for uh, educating people about 
the conservation of this, of this species. And so far we've got people in 53 different countries that are participating also. Question is, are we just taking a lot of photos? Are we just getting a lot of beautiful photos or, or is it actually having some success? And um, there are the 50, more than 50 countries that have, people have participated. But since it's all happened, there's been a lot of success already. Um, and it's not just from our work, but it's from raising awareness about this species around the world. As I said, a few, 20 years ago, nobody knew much about them. And now there's almost a news article every week in the newspaper or in the, online. They're listed under Australian legislation. They've been protected in many countries that used to hunt them. Um, and there's restricted trade under international legislation because of the work of citizen scientists and raising awareness for this species around the world. Unfortunately, they're not out of trouble yet. There's still a lot of hunting going on in, in countries like China, and they are still getting caught in nets, and there's still some issues going on. But as we raise the awareness, it really is having a big impact on the conservation of this beautiful species. And what I'd like to tell to you guys is, is throw out a challenge. If there's a species that you love in your own backyard, whether it be a Carnaby's cockatoo, or a, or a whale, or, or an orchid, or, or a tree frog, participate in this program. It's easy, there's so many citizen science projects going on around the world where you can play an active role, and especially play an active role to help with the conservation of the species. Anybody can do it, you don't have to be a scientist. We really want to encourage people to participate, and the challenge is, do you want to leave a legacy in this world? Do you want to, do you want to help with the conservation of species? And I think all of us, given the chance, we would. So good luck and come and join us.